Selamat pagi, Bu Kero. Sudah ada Bu Sita. Saya juga bentar lagi masuk ke yang dentus ini. Oh iya. Dokter Raufnya, Dokter Abdul Raufnya belum ada ya? Ya ini saya pengen kasih linknya dulu. Ini tadi dia minta saya. Iya. Oke. yang mahasiswa pasca juga yang kelas apa namanya kelas um, kanjek kampanye saya arahin ke sini. Tesita ya. nanti sama Tesita aja ya. Ini ya. <laughs> saya ada nguji juga jam 9 ini. Dan <laughs> Assalamualaikum, morning. Waalaikumsalam, good morning. Waalaikumsalam. Bagaimana kabarnya? Alhamdulillah baik. Baik. Dokter Raul, nanti dengan kawan saya Ibu Sita. Oh, Ibu Sita. Ya. Ibu oh, Mustaf Siratu. Halo, Dokter Raul. Hai Ibu Sita, sehat ya Ibu Sita? Alhamdulillah, sudah sehat. Oke, Ibu Caroline, how are you? Fine, halo Dr. Rauf. Hai Ibu. Sana tengah ada kuliah kah? So tengah cuti di sana? Uh, kita sudah mulai kuliah. Akan oh. mid semester ya. Sebentar lagi. Oh. Uh, mid semester in, uh, in... I think in... Uh, maybe two or three... Uh, three session next. Mm-hmm. Here in uh, UITM, you are going to start our our class uh, end of this March. Oh, oh uh, new semester? Well, oh, yeah, for our new semester. Oh. Sekarang student tengah cuti. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, still online or uh, already have a uh, offline? Uh, 50% will... Uh, Enter to uh, campus. Half of the student will masuk campus lah. Hmm. Only okay. certain batch. Uh. Oh, yeah. How about in Pajajaran? Yes, uh, Pajajaran will also have uh, half, half course, uh, hybrid learning. Uh, mm-hmm. With the attendance of 50% of student. Mm-hmm. But we... We we do, we haven't have any any information yet. Mm-hmm. Apakah jadi begitu ya? Mm-hmm. Uh, because the 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 facility is is still in preparation mm-hmm. for hybrid learning. Mm-hmm. Okay, same goes to here. 
we have blended learning and also hybrid learning. Mm -hmm. So most of our part one students now uh, we enter to campus. Mm -hmm. mm. Only new students compulsory to enter to campus for my faculty. Oh, uh, first grade students? For part one students. Part one? Students. Uh, oh. For new students, and there is compulsory for them to enter to campus. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, actually, uh, for this uh, political communication, uh, I'm not specialized in political communication, but I, I teach sociology. So part of sociology subject is about politics. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm the not not really expert in politics in Malaysia, just try to uh, sharing my knowledge, uh, just in, seeking ilmu about politics in Malaysia. Okay, that's great. I think we can uh, do comparison about Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. Uh, Insha'Allah. But actually, <laughs> I have few friends also who are very good in, in politics matters. Uh, maybe after this, I, will, I would like to introduce my friends if you want to uh, really want to get someone who are very expert in politics. <laughs> so, so when you will be introduce your friends to us, so we can uh, maybe have uh, research collaborations, maybe next month. <laughs> Inshallah. One of them is here, Ms. Shafi Abdul. Oh, uh, she just did. <laughs> Actually, a few of my friends joined the, the seminar last week. A few of them actually joined. <laughs> uh, I just share it at my Facebook, not at my uh, faculty, but they, oh. but they join also the, the seminar, the webinar. <laughs> Is your student also, also here to join this class, Dr. Huh? Your my, student? Yes, I, they are in holiday, so I didn't invite them. Oh, they are in holiday, okay. <laughs> So most of them are my friends, especially from my faculty and from my social media friends. So, do you have a plan to maybe um, uh, what to continue your study in postdoctoral degree, postdoc? Postdoc, postdoc. I don't think so because now I'm the head of department. Mm. Oh, like. Uh, still new, just six months. So I have um, another one and a half years for this position. And I think I need to focus at here first. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Dr. Yusa? I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> Still not have idea about postdoctoral degree, but uh, yeah, it is very interesting. But I don't know uh, uh, the exact time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to stay at my campus. Actually, <laughs> I don't want to go out. <laughs> <laughs> We are here very happy if you want to introduce your friends and then we can uh, maybe uh, not only research collaboration, but also maybe such as like this event. Uh, maybe after the pandemic, we can go to uh, UATM, teach there, and you are also can uh, with your friend come to Bayajaran and teaching here. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. Uh, yeah. Does the COVID-19 in... Uh, Malaysia is already uh, down or still high? Uh, getting lesser. Okay. Uh, since few days ago. So if you, if you want to go to Malaysia, have we to uh, maybe for a few days to quarantine or we don't have to quarantine anymore? That one, I'm not so sure. I think you need to quarantine. I think so. I'm not, not, not really sure. Okay. How about in Indonesia? Uh, still, we have to still maybe, if I'm not wrong, it's just about three until four days. Mm -hmm. But there is an exception. If you want to go to Bali, 
mm-hmm. you don't have to quarantine anymore. Only okay. if you want to go to Bali. <laughs> okay, I went to Bali last two years, ah, uh, 2018, not two years, ah, uh, four four years ago. Oh, four years ago. <laughs> Jakarta, Jakarta twice. No, I don't yet. <laughs> How about so you? please come here. You you have to you have to come to Bandung. Yeah, I heard about Bandung. Very beautiful <laughs> place to visit. How about you? Have you been to Malaysia before? Yes, four times. Four times. Wow. Four times. <laughs> Which state? Uh, state. Ah, Kuala Lumpur. No, Kuala Lumpur, Johor. Johor. Uh, Selangor. Yeah, so Selangor is near to Kuala Lumpur. Oh yeah. Uh, I have go to Johor two times and Kuala Lumpur four times. Oh, Johor and Malacca very close. Beside. Yeah, I have one time to Malacca. Oh, one time to Malacca. Yeah, but long time ago, 2006. Ah, 2006, long time ago. <laughs> it's not really long time ago. And the last time I go to Johor in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. 17 or 18, I forget. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, interesting. How about you, Ibu Karel? Have you been here in Malaysia? Can I cannot hear you, Ibu Karel? Okay, hello. Okay. Okay. Yes, I uh I have been to Malaysia, maybe um uh, two or three times. Okay. Uh, to to Bangi. Oh, Bangi. Yes. Uh, Unpad have uh, has a joint conference with UKM. Oh, UKM. Dr. Yusa is one of the uh, the coordinator. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bangi, Maybe. Malaka, one hour, just one hour from here. Malaka yeah. to Bangi. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Jakarta to Bandung also one hour, right? Or two hours? Um... I think uh, one hour. Uh, uh, three way. Mm-hmm. Two or uh, yes, one or two hours, depending on the situation. If uh, if we don't have traffic, uh-huh. yeah, maybe one hour. Okay. <laughs> Musita. Boleh dimulai? Oke. Okay. Saya izin ini ya ke ruangan sebelah. Ini Pak Yusa. Let's start. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, Dr. Caroline and lectures from Department of Politics. Uh, good morning, Dr. Abdul Rauf uh, Rizwan. And good morning to all participants in this forum. Uh, for the first uh, session, maybe uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Caroline to give uh, her speech. Please. Okay, thank you, uh, Ibu Sita. Uh, and thank you very much for Dr. Abdul Rauf Rizwan for uh, this second lecture we have today. And we will have uh, we will talk about uh, polit- uh, systematic literature review on political communication in Malaysia. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic because uh, we usually talk about political communication as a dynamic uh, process. But uh, in this lecture, we will learn about a systematic literature review on political communication. I think this is very interesting because we will learn about the methods, the research method, and the, uh, the process as the uh, object of research. Uh, I hope that we could learn so much, uh, learn a lot ab- uh, about this topic from Dr. Rauf, and we could have a, a good discussion about this topic. Uh, I think... Uh, That's all, uh, Ibu Sita, and I will uh, I I will say thank you also for the all the participant uh, for this lecture. 
uh, enjoy it and uh, don't forget to uh, to join on the next uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Caroline Pascarina, for uh, giving the first speech. Maybe we can move to the main session. Uh, my name is Mustaf Shalotu Umar. Uh, it is an honor to be your moderator in today's seminar. Uh, in this third political science international lecture series, we, uh, we will discuss about systematic literature review on political communication in Malaysia, which continuing our last session about uh, the same topic, uh, systematic literature review on social media during election. Uh, I will introduce our speaker today is Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Rauf Rizwan. He is the head of Study Center, Faculty of Communication and Media Studies in U UITM Waka. His expertise is in sociology, social media, mass media, public relations, communication, and education. Okay, now uh, we move to the main session. Allow me to welcome Dr. Abdul Rauf Rizwan to make his presentation, please. Okay, thank you, Ibu Sita, for introducing me to the audience here. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Once again, a very good morning. Thank you for having me for second time. And thank you for inviting me for my second presentation. And once again, uh, actually, I believe most of you actually are more expert than me in terms of politics and okay? political communication or politics. I just uh, want to share my knowledge actually what happened uh, in Malaysia scenario in communication perspective. Uh, same like what I shared to you last week, which I try to mix with social media during election. Okay, uh, so I'm going to share my slide now. In Malaysia, actually, UITM Laka, we always use Google Meet. Okay, not, uh, but every time when we had a webinar with Indonesia, we will use Zoom. So, Zoom. It's, <laughs> uh, it's very popular in Indonesia. Okay, where's the share button? Okay, share screen. Okay, okay can you see my slides? I believe you can see my slide, right? Right. Okay. We can see your slide. Okay, good. Okay, the topic that I'm going to present is about political communication in Malaysia. And that's the reason why I, I can share my knowledge because it involves with communication. And last week, it involved with social media. I believe it is related uh, uh, a little bit and with my area in communication and media studies. So for today's topic, I'm going to share with you is political communication in Malaysia. Uh, and then I did research more on uh, systematic literature review right, for this topic. Okay, first we go to the introduction part. So uh, here, politics is fascinating because it brings people together to discuss their differences. Okay, because here in Malaysia also we have few political parties. They have their own agenda and different idea. So in, in terms of politics, uh, it uh, can bring those people eh, in each political parties and eh, to discuss eh, their differences. So above all, politics is social in the war. However, the debate over the nature of politics and how it should be studied extend to the nature of the subject itself. Because there is this agreement about the nature of politics as a discipline, it encompasses a wide range of theoretical approaches and school of thought. So the same goes to communication. We have different school of thought. We have thousands of definitions about communication. So it also happened to politics and yeah, definition. So here in nutshell, politics describe all activities related to the government of a country and the official activities of elected individual. And this is what I can conclude from the first slide. 
Okay, now we move to the political communication. Uh, as there you can see the pictures, our former prime ministers, eh, Pak Lah, <coughs> eh, Tun Mahathir, eh, Najib, eh, and etc. So the exchange of ideas between political parties, elected officials, the media, <coughs> and citizen is known as political communication. And this one I actually took uh, one of the definition. Okay, is the exchange of ideas between political parties, elected official, the media, and citizen is known as political communication. So the the three words there actually is more involved with politics, involved with media, citizen, and politicians. So it combines social sciences, strategic communication, and it combines it involved with strategic communication, media studies, and politics and government into one program. So I believe when we talk about politics. It basically will involve with communication and it will involve with the media and to help the politicians. So it's uh, interrelated and between politics, communication, and media. So policy advocates, public relations professional, and some of them they have this uh, <clears throat> special officer or PR officer to help them. Uh, especially in terms of speech writers and campaign executive can use political communication technique and strategies to create, shape, and distribute messages that can influence the political process. So in my idea, I believe that uh, mass communication, especially public relations, okay, in terms of writing, we provide press release. In terms of, uh, we provide also the media, the video, the script writings, okay? So those things actually really, really help the politicians. So the defining characteristics of political communication is the creation of meaningful narrative in society that work to inform, to persuade, and call citizens to action. So actually we need this skill of uh, communication. Uh, we, we, we use media, we need politician, and then the politician also need media uh, to use them for what reasons? To inform, to persuade, and call citizens to action. So once again, politics and politician and media, they are interrelated. Uh, politician, they need media eh, and, and in, this, in this kind of terms. So political communication is the messaging that surrounds politics <clears throat> and can be directed both inwards and outwards. Citizens, for example, may send political messages to their elected official to influence their governance. Then elected official, on the other hand, can target political communication to their constituent while voters and candidates can be reached in a variety of ways. Speech writing, social media, television and radio are examples of this. And that's why <clears throat> the words for communication are there in politics and political communication because it also involves with the media, it also involves with the communications. So political communication consists of media interviews, published documents, website, op-ex, opinion editors in newspaper, political campaign and more. However, it can also include more than written and verbal communication. Okay, they are more written and also verbal communication. Uh, I believe most of the politicians, they need to master the skill eh, to communicate, uh, especially for public speaking. And they must master this skill, especially to persuade eh, and, and to inform, to introduce, and etc. Especially we want them, they must master the skill to persuade in order for them to become a good uh, politician. So political communication encompasses a political campaign or elected official logos, gesticulation during speeches, mannerism and even hairstyles. Okay, the hairstyle also the citizen will will look eh, the manner and eh, everything eh, from the from this politician. So the essence of politics is talk or interaction. And eh? politician they need to do a lot of talking. They need to communicate a lot. Eh? And they need to interact. There must be interaction eh, between uh uh this politics and to their audience okay? and then nowadays it's easier for them to get feedback because of the social media broadly defined political communication is the role of communication in the political process it can take place in a variety of form formal or informal and when they talk they can be formal or informal in a variety of venues can be everywhere in public and private place and through a variety of medium mediated or unmediated content 
So here what I can see, it includes the production and generation of messages by political actors, the transmission of political messages through direct and indirect channels and the reception of political messages. So here actually there are interaction. They have sender, they have receiver, they have channels, and then they have feedback. Okay, uh, this actually model of communication. So next part, <clears throat> political communication involve political institutions, political actors, the media, and most importantly, citizens. And don't forget about citizen. Okay, citizen is the most important thing that we need to consider because of them, they won the election. So every act of political communication, whether from parties, interest group, or the media, is intended to inform and influence citizens. The interaction of these three group matters in political communication. Within politics, communication flows move in, my, in many directions, downward from governing authorities to citizens. They have downward. And then horizontal between political actors, we have horizontal. And then including news media and upward from citizen and group to the political institution. So we have upward, we have downward, we have horizontal in terms of interaction or communication. So in a brief, political communication is concerned with being actively engaged okay, with local, regional states, uh, national and international issues and how the power of information persuasion and strategic message design can be used to understand and influence outcome at those levels, particularly in the areas of governance and societal behavior. So that's what I can summarize from, from this slide. So now I'm going to share a little bit about a scenario that happened in Malaysia, political communications in Malaysia. So here, basically, Malaysia's political system is based on a federal constitutional monarchy with the king serving as the head of state. In Malaysia, we have king as the head of state and the prime minister, we have prime minister as the head of government. And we have king and then followed by our prime minister as the head of government. So the federal government and the 13 state government share executive power. So in Malaysia, we have 13 states. Okay, so Barisan National, has ruled the country, the country for over 60 years without a break. And eh, for your information, okay, before this, eh, Barisa National eh, control and eh, rule the country for more than six decades and eh, more than 60 years. So, however, the 14th general election, GE14, created political turbulence that influenced many key aspects of Malaysia's political landscape including national and economic policies, social unity, and campaign strategies. So during uh, GE14, Generation 14, everything has changed. Okay, uh, We have another party eh, took over eh, Malaysia, eh, which is Pakatan Harapan. I will discuss more about it later. And then the result of the recent 2018 during Generation 14 in Malaysia were exceptional. Eh, sangat luar biasa in what happened in 2018. Eh, luar biasa sekali. Everyone got shocked. So BN was ousted from power after over six decades of authoritarian rule by a new opposition coalition. We call it the Pakatan Harapan or PH. So Pakatan Harapan took over from Barisan Nasional, BN. So in this historic election, BN lost all the federal state in Peninsula Malaysia except for the two less developed ones of Belis and Pahang, only two states, okay, controlled by Barisan Nasional. The rest all and won by Pakat Harapan. BN was also defeated in Sabah for the second time since its dramatic recapture in 1995. So, however, these results are not as surprising. If one looks at the outcome from its historical and developmental perspective, okay, some, some of us, this season also have aware about it that one day uh, government by sanation by sanation will collapse so the indication of the breakdown of the one party dominant state of malaysia can be traced back to 10 years ago since the 2008 and generation uh, 12 okay somebody uh, has uh, done some research they have found out that uh, partisan national during that time also has become unpopular 
okay, getting unpopular. Five years later, in the GE 13, in 2013, the results affected Barisan National. So, dah boleh nampak kegoyangannya during, eh, especially in 2013, during GE 13. So, it, it tends to shed light on the recent generation through historical and developmental approaches by linking them to the electoral results and political development in Malaysia, respective to GE 12 and GE 13. So, social media in Malaysia's political communication strategy. Now, I try to relate eh, social media and political communication strategy. So, BN social media game has objectively improved and they are improving. But, however, it failed to influence enough Malaysian to vote for it in the 14th general election. Okay, they have made some improvement, but still, okay, uh, failed right, during GE 14. So, the one NDV, Okay, that is one of the reasons. The 1MDB scandal broke in 2015, but its repercussions have lasted into the election season. Internet's ability to facilitate fact-checking and background-checking by citizens has increased transparency and participation in civic issues. Now, everything uh, government cannot hide from the citizen, and they can easier get the information from the News, especially from social media. So this increased authority mistrust by allowing dissent and competing narrative. The BN can fail to connect with voters on an emotional level and it was unable to compete with Pakatan Harapan approach, yeah, the opposition. So Pakatan Harapan also used mass mobilization via the internet. Uh, they are very active in using social media to tackle the public and yeah, to draw large crowds to ad hoc campaign rallies across the country. So that what happened okay, during the GE 14. And there was more room for dissent and competing narrative, which increased authority mistrust. The Najib administration found it particularly difficult to persuade voters of their government record as a result. So Parti Perbumi Bersatu during that time, MPP and Pakatan Harapan election campaigns were more sensitive to voters. That's their strategy. They are very sensitive to voters, try to tackle the voters, socio-economic grievance, then they are BN counterparts who fail to address the hugely unpopular goods and service tax about GST and cost of living issues that propel Pakatan Harapan to victory. So that is one of the factors and the reason how Pakatan Harapan can win the election. So instead, Barisan National hype up the economy by showing government-linked companies, CEOs promoting the PEC economic track record via the Hebat Negara Kusong, along with videos of pro-GST citizen and A-Asia Tony Fernandez. That was a BN and during the yeah, election. So Malaysia's opposition party, the Pakatan Harapan, gained momentum on social media and through it manifesto and campaign strategies, both of which reflected a vehement spirit for reform. So here in as such, BN social media misstep and disadvantage. They, they have wrong use and uh, wrong strategy. So they misstep and disadvantages in social media as a bit is poor electoral performance, especially when coupled with inadequate traditional strategies. So because Pakatan Harapan, they have moved to social media almost 100%, but government, the end of the time, they still rely on traditional media. So ultimately, what matters, what mattered was whether political parties were capable of registering the current of change for collecting within an evolving Malaysian society and responding to water frustration, appropriately something that the end failed to do, social media or not. So nevertheless, new media has enabled more voices to emerge and challenge the political hegemony. Okay, that's what happened in new media or social media. Communication is increasingly two-way. And last time for strategic media, we have television, we have newspaper, we have radio, which is focused more on one-way interaction, one-way communication. Now, because we have because of social media and Facebook, Twitter, okay. 
yeah, Instagram, TikTok, etc. Now we have two-way communication. We have feedback yeah, during the communication. Okay, during the interaction. So with the public expecting greater engagement and interactivity with their political representative. So that's what we want eh, as citizen. Okay, engagement and, and interactivity with our political representative. So the internet and social media have led to unprecedented complexity in the political communication process in Malaysia. External factors such as the electoral system and political institution play a part in determining whether ideas spread by social media can find fertile ground in the politics, which can ultimately bring about political change. So our politics uh, in Malaysia changed a lot, uh, especially during uh, GE18, okay, because of the uh, social media, the existence of social media. And then our uh, previous government collapsed, right, Barisan National. And then a few days ago, uh, on Saturday, 12 March, okay, so once again, uh, uh, Barisan National, the previous government, eh, okay, won the election. And BN, so here I'm going to share BN's approach to the Johor state election through social media. They have learned from their lesson before this. The BN machinery has been reminded to use social media as, as its main platform to reach out to voters in the Johor state election recently. So Barisan National has learned from their previous mistake. They have improved a lot. They have, what they have done, uh, they have uh, the politicians and the candidates and uh, down the field or turun padang to meet the citizens. Okay, uh, so that is one of the strategy. The end chairperson Ahmad Zahid Hamidi reminded the party machinery to work with each other because voters want to quick respond to issue raised. The effort made Barisan National to a resounding victory. BN won Johor with a super majority making a stunning comeback after being punished by voters in the 2018 general election. Now BN okay, uh, has become uh, more powerful uh, during this uh, next uh, election. Okay, during this election. Uh, last, if I'm not mistaken, last week, uh, 12 March ago, few days ago. Okay, because of help from the new media and they have learned from their previous mistake. Okay, a little bit, a glimpse of social media users in Malaysia. Here we have the figure here, active social network penetration in selected countries and ter territories as of January 2021. Malaysia is number five, according to the market and consumer data company Statista Malaysia is fifth when it comes to active social network penetration from a survey based on selected countries and territories as of January 2021. So Malaysia is one of the very active users in social network, social media. Okay. And then a glimpse of social media users in Malaysia in a report by Data Insight Company, Data Reportal, the average time spent using social media a day is three hours and one minute. In average, uh, people use social media is three hours a day. The number of social media users accessing via mobile phone is 27.83 million or 99.4%. Okay, use social media via mobile phones. And then 92.2% actively engaged with or contributed to social media in the past month and the average number of social media account per internet user is 9.6. About half of social media users or 53.2% use it for work purposes. And half of us use for work purposes. Okay, now I'm going to share uh, five effective political communication strategies. Uh, once again, okay, uh, effective political communication strategies. I just add on. Uh, I I I took uh, from the one of the uh, source uh, from internet. So politics and communication cannot be separated in a democracy. Politician and political party must convince voters of their ideas and proposal and try to organize from them sufficient majorities to achieve power. And we need them. And we need the majority to achieve power. So the purpose of any political communication is, therefore, to transmit content to specific recipients. This can be decision makers and multipliers or the voters directly. 
So what are the five effective quality communication strategies? Number one is the three C's, consistency, credibility, and coherence. The first step in practicing a successful communication strategy is the political sphere requires writing a definition of the narrative for the project we are asking people to trust in. So what attract voters are not individual political measures, but a global vision of the country that brings three C's into the line, which are consistency, credibility, and coherence. Okay, that's what the people want eh, from the government. These three elements represent in themselves the fundamental base that should inspire the remaining tactics. So these are the basic things. And then the second one is the importance of words. Eh, mind your word, especially the political parties and the, candidate, the politicians. Voters are interested in knowing that the party they choose to vote for represent very specific interests. They use different media to obtain information and consult election program, websites, and social media. But how do we find the right words to craft messages that reach them? So listening to the audience we are targeting is one of the main ways to know not only what to convey, but also how. In this way, the conclusion should serve to create effective messages that, for example, turn a necessary reform into what others describe as social dismantling, or that speak in different tones to young voters who are usually more receptive to change and to older, much more loyal voters. So we need, must know uh, in choosing words to our target audience, eh, to the youngster or to the older generation. We must know how to tackle them. And we use different words, different way to tackle different audience. And then we must have dynamic communication. The past has taught us that unexpected event can change the entire dynamic of an election campaign or term. Think of it as a pilot who not only knows the coordinate of the target before a flight, but must also take into account possible influences along the way, such as crosswind, turbulence, traffic along the route, and the performance and capability of his plane. In political communication, this changing aspect, in, uh, aspect includes, for example, bad news, changes in stakeholder expectation and perception, sudden rumors, but also the influence of other actors who draw attention to their messages. In short, everything distracts from the normal course of event. So a few days ago, we have flight in Malaysia. We want to see how the politician uh, show their concern and try to help the victims. Okay, They must know how to deliver the, uh, the message to the audience, then to show their sympathy, Okay, they must share that they are very responsible to what happened to the uh, citizens. And then a strategy of each channel, the emergence of social media and digital channel as a whole has led to new form of communication, even in politics. Okay, politics change uh, because of this new media. So the current selection of media is huge and create confusion when setting criteria. Be careful, it's not about reproducing the same thing on each of them, but about providing suitable content on the channel where your target audience is located. Moreover, certain format work better in some cases than in others. For example, short videos are great for Facebook, not for other platforms. And remember that social media is two-way communication, and we have feedback there. It's not just about saying or transmitting messages, it's all about dialogue and listening eh, to our public. And finally, the value of authenticity and empathy. Politicians are by definition representative of the people. So that is why it is important to remain close to the citizen and find out about their concerns directly. And they, might, they need to check and their daily routine with their Facebook account, with websites, eh, Twitter, and look what uh, public want to, to share eh, to them. And maybe they want to complain something we need to, as the politician, as the uh, uh, people in the political parties, they need to reply and give feedback. So voters demand candidates they personally know and who are convincing. And even word of mouth propaganda has not lost its relevance in the digital age. And still, we need them right, to communicate face to face, and not only in social media. That, but they need to turun padang, okay, or down the field. 
So whether it is online at event or during personal meeting, showing authenticity and empathy represent an opportunity to build a strong brand around a leader. Okay, that is the tips. Okay, five strategies in political communication. Okay, so I have done my lecture regarding the political communication in Malaysia. Now I'm going to, to share <coughs> in terms of research that we have conducted. Okay, so before we proceed, we will like to share our research method, methodology. Uh, so for this research, we are using uh, a systematic review, a systematic literature review. And was conducted in the study taking into account potential article published from January 2017 to March 2020. So 17, 18, 19, it's around, uh, around five years uh, research uh, journals. The collection of electronic data through Google Scholar, we have 30, 32,300 journals were to identify studies related to political communication measure, which is a lot and uh, too many. Variation in the term used in this research are social media, election, and campaign. So an author's keyword is a term that the authors consider reflecting the content of a journal that confirmed to the desired extent after doing screening. Based on the title and abstract, a total of 62 studies were selected and reduced to 62 and after we have done some screening. So the next step, the full text article is evaluated more carefully. Only nine articles are related to the research question and met the criteria. Uh, how we uh, reduce some of the article, maybe some of the article we didn't get the full articles. Maybe they use a uh, different language, they use uh, other language which we cannot read. Or maybe the article is not related to the area of political communication. So those are articles that we have removed eh, from 32 to 32,000, reduced to 62,000. And then finally, we managed to get only nine articles. Okay. So the main result question that guided the study was, uh, what is the political communication scenario in Malaysia? Okay. So this here, we use Google Scholar only 32,000 and then we reduce to 62 right, the results. Okay, finally, data is extracted from each independently reviewed article based on the date and year of publication, authors, type of studies, the evaluation method used, and the finding of political communication in Malaysia. Okay, we just abstract and get the findings and the methods, the authors, and the uh, the articles and the title. Article that met the criteria have been used in the study as set out in the table below. Okay, from these nine studies, seven were quantitative. Uh, we have survey, quantitative survey, and then we have uh, uh, content analysis, okay? quantitative. And then we have one qualitative, which is in-depth interview and observation, and one concept paper. All were conducted in uh, Malaysia. Okay, if we have, if we choose other country, there will be a lot. That's why we just focus uh, in Malaysia and to reduce the number. Okay, so these are the findings. Uh, Neden et al. to 2021, author Oyer. We have the title is Discriminant from the Youth Standpoint Upon Young Leadership in Politics, a case study in Malaysia. This one, the method is qualitative in that interview. So the findings show that there are barriers surrounding politics, which are each experience and general perception between old and new politicians, including education, which seems to be a recurring topic. Furthermore, this is also spotted out that females do not have a significant share of voice in politics. And this one is done by Neden 2021 and still new last year. Uh, and then we have Ko, Koe and Mohta Khairia 2022, the latest edition. And this year research, the role of political marketing and its important in Barisan National at Malaysia General Election, um, but it's only a concept paper. So direct voter contact, indirect voter context, dominant party, party leader, re, redelineation, 
first pass the post system are the political marketing tools implemented by Barisan National. So those are the findings and by Kuei Mota and Khairia. And then Hassan et al. Okay, this one my friend, Sufyan Hassan. Okay, he has done one research in, in terms of politics also. Political participation, integrity scale, validity and psychometric is a quantitative survey. So the study reported that media savvy, authentic sources, moral creation, and ethical actions are highly contribute to the political participation integrity scale. So there, uh, he has they, they have created this scale in order for them uh, to do this research. And then Asad et al. 2021, interpretation of political inclination in online newspaper and ideological disposition through transitivity analysis. They use quantitative content analysis. So from the research, Pakatan Harapan as a political party was found as main duel in 100 days performance after winning election 2018 in both newspaper through their linguistic stances, which were collected from five news report from Nature Kini and three from news that's time based on social actors performance on 17 and 18 August 2018. Nature Kini had maintained its neutral. And from the research, Nature Kini is neutral. Hello, Dr. Raouf. It seems that you have problem. Dr. Raouf, <laughs> still mute. Okay, okay. Can you listen to me now? Yes, yes, but uh, your slide is gone. Uh, so oh, my slide is gone. Okay, I need yeah, to. Yeah, you can. Share the screen once more. I didn't realize it suddenly. <laughs> no internet connection. Is it until this slide or previous slide? Yeah, the previous. Previous. Huh? One. Yeah. Is it this one? Uh, no, 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 no. This one? Yes. Hassan at all done? Yes, yes. Hassan? That's Yes, that's uh, the slide. The last so slide. This, this slide I have done or not? This one I have presented. Done. Yes, uh, I said uh, you have done explaining. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Maybe I have uh, internet connection problems. And that's okay. okay. I talked alone just now. <laughs> I was alone. <laughs> Okay, next, uh, Sa'alam. Actually, uh, Shida Sa'alam also is my colleague here in my faculty. So he did research on how media literacy competencies contribute to political participation integrity among young people. And now she's doing uh, her PhD in this area in media literacy. Okay, it's about quantitative survey. So uh, she found out that this study found that access, uh, analysis, and evaluate and create dimensions significantly influence the integrity of political participation among young people. Okay, students, the, the mentioned internet connection is unstable. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you there? Yes, we're still listening to you. Your song is clear. Dr. Rao, could you hear me? Okay. Okay, sadly, they mentioned internet is unstable. Okay, student king to become young media con
I think I lost the connection once again, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to share once again my slide. Okay, where's the sharing button? Yeah. The same problem in Indonesia. We also uh, usually lost our connection during the during the webinar <laughs> or during the class online class. Last, so week, okay. <laughs> last week was okay. No, 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 no. No interruption next last last week. Last week was okay. And I'm I'm not sure why why to this it happened. Okay, next by Jian Eng. Did urbanization or ethnicity matters more in Malaysia 14 general election? It's a quantitative survey. So the study found that constituencies urbanization level has the most significant predictive power in determining vote share. Ethnicity along to third variable of significant plays a secondary role. Moreover, these predictors marginal effect on the vote share are highly complex, non-linear and difficult to pick up by conventional regression methods. Then we have Saha. So Haimi Saha, also my colleagues, but not in Malacca. He is in Sha'alam and Dr. Swaimi. An analysis of Malaysian political communication and its role in electoral process is a quantitative survey. Uh, from his research, mainstream media still play a significant role as the main political information source for voters in the rural and suburban areas. Maybe social media is more suitable for urban area, but uh, some location in rural, they need to have this mainstream idea, um, uh, mainstream media for the source of information. So traditional media such as television can be the main information need for the voters to seek more information that can directly influence their political information efficiency. Then we have Hamadan at all 2019, media issues and voters behavior in the 14th generation, a preliminary study. It's a quantitative survey. Social media become the primary medium for accessing information during the general election. And this one, the finding focus more on social media. The issue of rising prices of goods and petrol burdens nations. Respondents read online newspaper to know about the current issues. So this is what happened under his research. Okay, publics are more concerned about the rising issue. Uh, issue of rising prices of good and petrol patterns. And then Salman et al. 2018, political engagement on social media as antecedent for political supporting support among voters in Malaysia. It's a quantitative survey. The respondent agree that social media play a role and has the advantage of channeling political information, which the mix is very high compared to conventional media and help to enhance the image of candidates and political parties by displaying candidate activity in serving the people. Overall, the mean is more than three. I believe the scale is one to five. So if the mean is more than three, it's considered high. So the highest come from uh, channeling political information. Okay, now we move to the conclusion. There are barriers uh, surrounding politics, which are age, experience and general perceptions between old and new politicians, including education, which seem to be a recurring topic. Female do not have a significant share of voice in politics, and this is one of the findings. Direct and indirect voters contact, dominant party, party leader, gerrymandering, first past the post system, are the political marketing tools implemented by the Barisan National in Malaysia. These are the strategies that used by BN, which they have won the election. And then media savvy, Authentic sources, moral creation, and ethical action are highly contributing to the political participation integrity scale. The constituency's urbanization level has the most significant predictive power in determining vote share. Ethnicity, along to third variable of significant, play a secondary role. Moreover, these predictors marginal effect on the vote share are highly complex, non-linear, and difficult to pick up by conventional regressional methods. And this one from my slide, mainstream media still have, uh, still play a significant role as the main political information source. And just now we mentioned a lot about social media, but one of the findings still stated that mainstream media or traditional media play a significant role as the main political information source, especially those who live in uh, suburban or rural area. 
and solve for voters in the rural and suburban areas. The national media such as television can be the main information need for the voters to seek more information that can directly influence their political information efficiency, especially those in area which uh, we don't have internet connection. So during the general election, the media becomes the primary source of information. In addition to traditional media, the public reads online newspaper to stay up to date on current events. So we need to mix uh, between uh, traditional media and new media. So what we can conclude, actually, social media still uh, plays a role and has the advantage of channeling political information uh, compared to traditional media. Maybe traditional media, they focus more on uh, rural area, but social media can focus almost all area, except those areas which uh, don't have internet connection. It also serves to enhance the image of politicians, and they need to promote them, themselves, they need to publicize themselves, they need to have this kind of visibility, which I have mention share with you from previous uh, sharing session and visibility is very important and political party by displaying candidate activities in serving the the public and they need to show it to the people uh, in malaysia we have uh, example like abit you okay they need to show that they do something and good deeds to the people so people are are, are happy with him uh, so the politician also need to do the same thing in, uh, to to get uh, uh, confident eh, uh, trust from the people. Okay, so I think that is all from me. I hope you enjoy my sharing session. My sharing session. So after this, uh, I will pass to uh, Ibu Shiro for the Q and A session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdul Rao, for giving a very interesting and informative uh, presentation which has broadened uh, my horizon and also uh, our horizon about political communication in Malaysia. It's uh, similar with Indonesia, especially after uh, the rise of social media and uh, how the social media shape our uh, political uh, situation right now, especially uh, during the election. Okay, now uh, let's uh, start the Q&A session. I would like to invite three first questions from uh, the participants. You can raise your hand or open your microphone, please. And don't forget to mention your name. And if you can, you can uh, also open your uh, camera. Please. Uh, almost uh, all the participants are students from political communication class and marketing uh, strategy class, if I'm not mistaken. It, really, uh, it is very related to our um, topics today. Maybe Erwina or Bima, we can start first. We can also compare our um, exper uh, experience in social media and political change in Indonesia and Malaysia. Is it the same uh, pathway or uh, lead to the different uh, way because in Indonesia, uh, Dr. Rauf, maybe you you have ever heard about Basel. <laughs> we have a lot of Basel in our social media, which is uh, come from the pros and the cons uh, groups uh, from the, the um, supporter of the government and from the opposition also. I Is think, in my opinion, in Indonesia, they are more stable under Jokowi, right? <laughs> Many uh, people they love Jokowi, so... <laughs> <laughs> parties. 
Yeah, it, it's depend on our uh, perspective because if we uh, look uh, beyond our uh, talks in social media, there's also a battle, I guess, uh, 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 maybe a discourse uh, fighting about uh, how the government rules uh, the state right now. It's divided into two um, two groups, mm -hmm. into two main groups, pros or cons. Is he active using social media? Yeah. Of Indonesia, is he active using social media, Facebook, Twitter? Yes, uh, but uh, from the last uh, research, and almost um, all many scholars are now, see the Twitter as the main uh, the main source for uh, social media research mm -hmm. because uh, it is uh, more vibrant and more real time and uh, Twitter never uh, get uh, down like Facebook. Facebook sometimes uh, if um, the government want to shut down the internet or maybe shut down the tolls from the citizens. Uh, they control the Facebook and also the WhatsApp because uh, it, uh, it comes from the same group like Facebook and also from Meta. Mm -hmm. But Twitter is very stable. Mm -hmm. Twitter. Okay, please, maybe uh, Alia or oh, Muhammad Atur. Uh, yeah, uh, selamat pagi. Uh, so I want to ask the the difference. So what I know is Indonesia is a uh, presidential uh, system with a republic and Malaysia is a uh, constitutional monarchy. Is there, uh, in the context of political communications, is there any role of influence by the monarch? And there are nine states who has, who have still regional monarchy, like state uh, state monarch. Is there any role and influence for the political communication in Malaysia? Uh, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, that's the first. If there is any, the second or the third question, uh, we can collect the first or... Uh, if it's not, Dr. Rauf will directly answer. Actually, I'm not, not very clear with the oh, question. Okay, okay. Atur, uh, could you please repeat the question? Okay, since Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy, which is uh, very different with Indonesia uh, as a republic, mm -hmm. so I want to ask, is there any um, significant role and influence uh, towards the political communication in Malaysia in the context of uh, monarch and the royal family, maybe, uh, in Malaysia? Um, I think as Malaysia is a uh, monarchy, actually they are, especially we cannot talk back about our our Raja-Raja, our Sultan, we need to be very careful. Uh, because almost every state here in in Malaysia uh, is being ruled by Sultan. Eh? Almost every state, okay. So, uh, uh, so the people and the netizen especially need to be careful in whatever they write at social media. They will be punished if they talk bad about uh, to our raja raja or to our our Sultan. And uh, I believe the the palace okay influence the dominance of the political geopolitics. That, that's what I believe. Did I answer your questions? Yes, it, it answered my question. Thank you. Okay, so the monarch uh, system is still have uh, their influence in political communication. Uh, same goes to what happened a few days ago in Johor. Uh, although the end won the election, but in order for them to choose the uh, 
uh, head of the state or ketua menteri or menteri besar, they need to get approval uh, from the Sultan. Uh, Sultan will decide who will be the uh, uh, who will be the uh, menteri besar or ketua menteri. So make sure that the candidate has a good reputation and, and good relation with the Sultan. Okay, that's interesting because uh, however the turbulence or the uh, dynamic from uh, the social media talks in Malaysia about the parties or uh, the political actors is still need an improvement, uh, approval for uh, from the Sultan. That's what happened uh, during GE14. Okay, Pakatan Harapan, actually there are many Chinese in Pakatan Harapan also, but it's difficult for them, uh, for Chinese to become the Prime Minister because they need to get rest to approval from the Sultan. So they will push Malay to become the Prime Minister. Basically, Sultan have this kind of tendency to choose Malay and Islam to become a, a leader, the, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. So we need to get that kind of approval, restu from the Sultan first. So it's not easy for for non Malays uh, to become the Prime Minister. Okay, it's kind of the same energy in Indonesia. <laughs> it's still, uh, identity politics still uh, take the main role in uh, election. Because so you need to know that Malaysia agama rasmi is Islam. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, there's uh, another from the participant. Maybe uh, Budi or Devia, Harifka. Some students uh, have watch the film because uh, we assigned them to watch Our Brand is Crisis uh, talks about uh, how the political communication consultant shape uh, their political uh, actors, uh, shape uh, the politician to be good uh, in, in the, uh, what it is, in, in the campaign uh, arena. And maybe it's uh, one of the issue that uh, Dr. Rauf mentioned before about the integrity scale, about the empathy and also something like that. It's still uh, our citizen concern to choose the right people with the good moral, is that? So, so the politician with a good moral still, uh, still the chosen one. If you want to talk more about, if you want, if you want to know more about the Malaysian scenario during, especially during the general fourteen general election, uh, you can go to YouTube and then you type uh, "M for Malaysia." Mm. There is documentary what happened in Malaysia during GE fourteen. M, M. For Malaysia, Malaysia yeah. and then you can study more about uh, politics in Malaysia if you are interested to know uh, what happened in, in Malaysia. It's a okay. live documentary. It's a uh, documentary one. Okay. How, how about the uh, politician or uh, political actor? Are they uh, show a good image to the people? Or uh, they appear as uh, their self, and whether uh, yeah, whether they are an angry man or maybe a wise man, or they have tend to be a good one. Okay, as I mentioned uh, to you, visibility is very important. So we always need to portray something good and to the public. Okay, they need to show that they are very concerned. They they always ah uh, uh, padang down the field, uh, always do something good deeds, and then uh, what we call eh, something like ah uh, you need to market yourself. 
but however what happened during GE14 because of the issues and controversy by Datuk Najib about 1MDB, about the corruption, that's why uh, government and Barisan National collapsed and, and took over by Pakatan Harapan just because of that controversy 1MDB now is still under investigating eh, about the corruption by the previous Prime Minister and it's still under investigating so that one actually very uh, impact uh, the the citizen and, and now we have netizen in internet uh, to to 100% trust the Barisan National okay but still when when uh, the previous election in Johor when Barisan National won the election it shows that uh, public still have a trust to the Barisan National because government still uh, don't decide either uh, Najib Datuk Najib is uh, innocent or not and uh, we still we are still waiting for the answer okay still under investigating about about one MDB and that's why the public also need cannot uh, blame 100% to the Najib because he is still innocent until he is proved guilty. So that's why BN still uh, can win the election and the previous election. And in terms of, uh, we try to relate in communication, politician must be good in, in, in communication. How, however, usually they have uh, their own advisor that good in communication such as if 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 I if I want to be a candidate or a politician, I must be good in how to use social media. But if I'm not good, if I don't know how to use social media, then I need to get uh, my my what we call it uh, special officer or public relation officer to help me to publicize me to help me to promote me at social media. Maybe I don't know how to use social media, but my pegawai or my public relation officer can help me to, to promote me at social media. Uh, so that's one I think the pegawai has or uh, the special officer or public relation need to do something uh, to, to help the uh, candidates. And then their advisor, the, especially the public relations, can advise especially in terms of their image and reputation. Uh, that's why what can I add on? Okay, uh, some interesting uh, issue then is political communication advisor is something uh, interesting in Malaysia or not? Uh, yes, uh, we need PR, public relations officer or advisor, or we call it a uh, special officer uh, to help the candidate, mm -hmm. especially if you are old school, the candidate is uh, the age is 60 and plus 50 and plus and then don't know how to use uh, facebook don't know how to use uh, twitter tiktok uh, so this uh, pegawai khas or advisor can can help uh, the politician and uh, to improve their image uh, to to market them okay mm -hmm. uh. is, is it is it promising industry to become advisor in there uh as long as these people are, are good in using social media, um, we actually in government, we have press secretary mm. to help to promote the government, uh, to, to take care of government image and reputation. Not only the government, but also the chief minister, the prime minister or the ESCO, whatever, they have their own pegawai khas or uh, press secretary. Okay, to take care the prime minister at the same time they need to deal with the media. They become the sometimes they can become the spokesperson. Anything they will provide the press release, the press kit uh, to the people, to the media. Okay, and then if the candidates, if the politician uh, not good enough in terms of public speaking, and then they need to have this spokesperson uh, from the from this uh, advisor. Advisor can be his or her spokesperson. But I believe majority, uh, the rakyat, the citizen want the candidate who can communicate very well. And not to use, uh, every time when something happen, they use spokesperson, they use someone else to talk in behalf of them. It's actually, that one also, uh, 
not very good. So the, the candidate need also to improve their communication skills. Okay. Okay. Are uh, someone like uh, you, Dr. Rauf, or maybe another lecturer in uh, political communication uh, are being uh, advisor for politician or not? <laughs> Because in Indonesia, it's a, a common uh, thing to do. A, like, a political communication lecturer can become an advisor for politician. Okay, I think it's okay. Uh, it happened in Malaysia too. Uh, just from my experience, I was the head of corporate communication department for my university. And, and uh, last time also, I worked at City Usa Kerajaan Negeri Selangor, under Selangor. I was the PR practitioner there. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I also teach public relations students uh, for mass communication faculty. And then in here in our university also, uh, uh, they choose lecturers to become the uh, PR practitioner, uh, or we call it a coordinator for public relations. And then... Uh, I think all universities, faculties, uh, all the candidates, and then they, they are also uh, journalists who were uh, appointed as the press secretary to a mm -hmm. ministry. The senior journalists and become the secretary, press secretary to ministry. It happened in Malaysia. So... For lecturer also, maybe they can hire us to become, um, not hire for quite some time, they can hire us to become their PR uh, practitioner or as their advisor. Okay. Or um, maybe something like open your uh, office uh, alone to be an advisor. Uh, is it a well-known uh, practice or not? Because... In Indonesia, the lecture or a group of lecture can uh, build or can develop an office, their own office, to be an advisor, a political uh, communication advisor. Yeah, it, it can happen to Malaysia. Uh, my friend, uh, associate professor Dr. Saraswati, uh, she became the pegawai khas for Datuk Najib long time ago. The lecturer for UITM in Shah Alam be become the uh, special officer for uh, Datuk Najib. So they can hire lecturer also to, to help them uh, in our ministry. What, what about uh, the student? Uh, is there any change for uh, the student to develop uh, an advisor office? for political communication in Malaysia? Because we have in our department, uh, our uh, student uh, make an office advisor for political communication. He, uh, he's still young, but he, he can uh, control the social media and he also can shape the public opinion for uh, his clients. Okay, uh, in, uh, I give example in UITM here in, in Malaysia, in Malacca, UITM. When, when I was a uh, head of corporate communication, I always uh, want my students to involve uh, with this kind of activities. I, I, I appointed them to become uh, license officer. And sometimes I ask them to, to monitor the website, uh, Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, they also help us to, to deliver the information through social media. And then when we have visitors, especially from other countries, and then I will hire my own students to entertain the client. And I, I appointed them as the license officer because we also have students from other countries to visit, come to visit here in Malaysia. So I try to involve them uh, in this kind of situation so they can get at least some experience before they graduated here in, in our university. Okay, that, that's uh, an interesting um, profession, I guess, in the future because uh, political communication advisor, maybe especially uh, the youth one, uh, the young people who can uh, control or who can play uh, very well in social media and help the 
the senior politician <laughs> to engage with uh, the citizen or the netizen. Okay, maybe there are some questions from participants. And most of our students here also, we have a practical training. Before they graduated, they need to go to industry at least for one semester or maybe around six months. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, at the end of the semester, when they are in final year, they need to go to industry doing practical training so they can gain another experience before they graduated. How about in uh, Parpajara? Do you have practical, practical training? Yes, uh, there are also practical training. Uh, we we remake our uh, curriculum. Uh, we revise our curriculum a year ago, and we uh, plan to uh, the student to have uh, practice in the industry for maybe uh, from the fifth semester until the seventh semester. So some of them can go to pemerintah, kerajaan, government. Some of them can go to industry, to consult, consult, apa, consultant, NGO, yeah. um, yes, the the and etc. Okay, it's the same, the same. Okay, uh, Alia, maybe help me, Alaida, or Shaira, maybe you have uh, something to discuss with Dr. Rauf. Okay, Hansel. Uh, okay, uh, good morning. Uh, I want to ask about how political figures or political polit or political politics in Malaysia attract sympathy or support from minorities people like Chinese, like Indian or other minority groups. Uh, because uh, my own who live in Malaysia, uh, just tell me or tell me. Uh, Malaysia government uh, attention to minorities people still very lacking. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Raif, did you get? Uh, not, not very clear the question. So I'm sorry. Oh. No, I'm not okay. very clear. Uh, maybe I will summarize the question. Is there any strategy from the politician to gain uh, the support or to gain vote from the minority because uh, Hansel relatives in Malaysia uh, tell him that minority is uh, lack from political participation. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, last time we had BN under Barisan National, they have MIC and MCA and AMNO. So AMNO represent Malay, MIC represent Indians, MCA represent Chinese. And that's, that's why how they try to uh, combine all the ethnics under one party, under Barisan Nasional. And Pakatan Harapan also, the opposition party, Pakatan Harapan, they also have this uh, Amana, which majority of them are Malays. And then they have this uh, DAP, majority, uh, DAP, majority of them are Chinese. And uh, Indian also are uh, in the AP. Uh, and then we, they have a uh, party ke, uh, keadilan. And under keadilan also, they have few Chinese and Indians there, including Malays. So when that when they try to, uh, what we call, eh, actually both uh, the opposition party and the current party, they, they mix with all ethnics. So some Indians are in this uh, in the end, or some Indians and Chinese in the end, and some Indian and Chinese also uh, in Pakatan Harapan. But a majority of Chinese and Indians, they are in Pakatan Harapan, not in uh, Barisan National. Okay, but they have this party to, to represent them. The end also help this uh, Chinese and Indian. Pakatan Harapan also, they have, they have this Chinese and Indian to represent them. Okay, so uh, there is um, maybe a division in every parties to engage with the minor, uh, minority citizen. Yes. Is that? No. Oh. Okay. Hansel? Did I answer your question? That there are some Chinese or Indians who are pro-government, uh, maybe Barisan National, and, they, and then majority of them, some of them also, they are uh, 
support Pakatan Harapan. The majority of them will support Pakatan Harapan. We know about it. That's the reality. And Chinese and Indians, they are they are more to op opposition party, Pakatan Harapan. So the uh, the minority is also divided into different parties, right? Yes, but um, most of them are at opposition party. Oh, okay. Uh, Pakatan Harapan, we can see many Chinese and Indians there compared to Barisan National. Okay, okay. Hansel, is it clear enough? Or maybe you can clarify something? Uh, it's clear. Uh, thank you. Okay. Another one? See in Sabah, Sabah, there are too many ethnics. Mm -hmm. Thousands of ethnics. So they have their own uh, ethnic parties. And then this ethnic party is up to them. Either they want to join with uh, Barisan National or they want to combine or they want to join with Pakatan Harapan. So they can choose. Okay. But they cannot stand alone. It's difficult for them to stand alone. So they can either they collaborate with the current government or they join the opposition parties. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Ethnic party. Oh, what, what is it then? Dr. Rauf in yeah. Sabah. What the name of the groups? We have uh, Parti Warisan Sabah. Parti Warisan Sabah. Okay, Bima. There's another question from the participant, Bima. Yeah, uh, good morning, Doctor. Yes. I'm Bima from Unpad, from Pajajaran. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, I heard something interesting from your presentation that uh, in Malaysia, information cannot be hid uh, from the Malaysian citizen. But uh, we know, but I know in the country, uh, the, the government has always uh, always has scandal. Uh, I don't know in Malaysia, but uh, I know in Indonesia, the government always has scandal. So uh, in Malaysia, how does the government, uh, the government regime cover up uh, the scandal from the public? Or from the netizen. Scandal. Uh, example in Indonesia, the government has yeah, uh, like uh, politics scandal, environmental scandal, or uh, anymore. Example in Indonesia, the government has buzzer, like uh, Busita said. <laughs> okay, Dr. Rauf. In terms of scandal, right? Scandal. Yeah. How 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 the government cover up uh, the scandal? Okay, we have PDRM, Police Diraja Malaysia, policy. We have MCMC, uh, Multimedia Commission, who monitor all these things, especially in uh, social media. So they need to be careful in, in, in whatever they write at social media. So in terms of controversy among the candidates, so it's up to, to us, the public, either want to trust it or or we assume that it is uh, fake news or is a uh, sedition or defamation, only fitnah. So if you are pro-government, the current government example like Barisan National, so you will still support uh, previous Prime Minister, Datuk Najib, because you are very pro. So whatever something bad about Najib, you still don't believe it because you think that Najib, uh, Datuk Najib is a very good person, good credibility those who are very pro amno but if you are from opposition party okay you always think bad about the previous prime minister although he did something good people will still talk bad about him so once again it's up to us either we are in this party the current party the current pemerintah or we are from opposition side okay like my parents Orang tua, they, they like Najib a lot. Although Najib has a lot of controversy, but they love Najib. Yeah, because Najib is still considered as uh, innocent. Did, did, did I answer your question? I, I believe scandal means controversy, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what Bima uh, means. Okay, although Najib has a lot of controversies, but 
people who are very like the Barisan Nasional, UMNO, who represent Malays, they still will vote for Barisan Nasional because they believe that those controversy is uh, uh, tipu or fake news ataupun that is just uh, apa, uh, fitnah, eh, defamation eh, to, to, to Najib. So it's up to you. Either you want to believe the controversy, the scandal, or you think that is a just a, a games play by the opposition parties untuk jatuhkan Najib. Okay, but I believe many youngsters, young generation, okay, they most of them they listen to social media, so they think that Najib is not a good person. But those who are uh, these uh, conventional people, like our parents, my parents, they they rely most of the information from the television or newspaper. So they love Najib very much. So we have this kind of gap between young generation and old generation. Okay, and that's my 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 opinion. Okay, ten cents opinion. Okay, that's. Uh... Interesting answer, Bima. How? Yeah, uh, the government doesn't make a new issue, maybe. Oh, uh, maybe Bima uh, will ask about if there's something controversial comes uh, from the politician. Is there any counter issue from the government to cover up uh, the controversy? Okay, Datuk Najib, I, I, like I, I, I have discussed, I shared with you from the previous uh, presentation, he's very active in social media, especially in Twitter, Facebook. So he always portrays uh, something uh, good about him, what he has done to the country, example. Okay, so that's how they try to uh, improve his image. Although there are a lot of controversies uh, about Najib, but he also has a lot of followers. People call him as Bosku, boss. Boss. Uh, Bosku, Bosku. Okay, as uh, that's how to portray good image about uh, about Najib. I love uh, Prime Minister. I love PM during during his time. I love PM, Bosku. Okay, that that I think I believe his strategy uh, to get uh, uh, more supporters. And from from the citizens. Okay, uh, but there is uh, something uh, maybe I need to compare uh, about um, Malaysia situation and Indonesia. Uh, from what I uh, get in Bima questions is in Indonesia, if there is a controversy. Uh, from the politician or something uh, from the government, the government will uh, put on the news another issue to cover the controversy. Okay, that's one in communication we call agenda setting theory. Yes, is, it, uh, is there in Malaysia uh, doing the same way or different? Okay, it, it happened to all negeri negara agenda setting theory. Example, last time uh, Najib, uh, we had scandal with Altan Tuya, uh, with Najib. So they try to uh, uh, to delete the issue. They try to cover another issue. Example, too many bus accident during yeah. uh, that week, during that month. So media always portray about uh, bus accident compared to Antan Tuya case with Najib. Okay. Okay. So it happened. That one we call uh, agenda setting theory. We try to highlight other issues. If if we have uh, that controversy, that issue, we want to uh, close the issue. We try to highlight another issue. Yeah, yeah. That that's the the BMS, uh, means uh, from the question because in Indonesia. Uh, from the netizen talks uh, in social media, there is uh, if there is a big uh, news and bad news, uh, government also, uh, will always cover or delay the news with 
uh, terrorism uh, news or maybe uh, another uh, gimmick news that uh, may be very unimportant to to gain the the what is it to gain the uh, audience interest but it always success to cover up uh, the controversy okay. so it, it happened to many countries <laughs> we look uh, the current government who control the media especially the traditional media but not for social media social media yeah. everyone can write anything so we can uh, read a lot of news a lot of information from social media but um, for television uh, they all portray the good things about the current government because government control the media right especially newspaper and radio for traditional media uh, so they try to play the issue okay uh, if there is a rising uh, trend in malaysia for citizen journalism or something like that citizen journalism okay uh, actually this one we call as uh, warfare perang saraf mm. okay and then citizen journalism actually our citizen they, they like to investigate too many things yeah okay uh, so they also can become citizen journalism but we we didn't recognize them as uh, professional journalism <laughs> okay everyone can become anyone anyone can can write eh, at social media but we uh, didn't acknowledge them as journalists and they, they are what we call eh, citizen citizen well, just now citizen journalism eh? yeah in, in indonesia uh, in the previous year uh, citizen journalism becomes uh, rice uh, activity because of the social media and almost all the people are uh, very easy to access and to write uh, something about uh, everything in social media so citizen journalism become uh, one uh, one activity that uh, cover the another mainstream uh, media but now the trend to uh, the trend maybe shift to another concept such as digital activism mm -hmm. is there in Malaysia also a rising uh, the trend about digital activism yes it, it, it also happened to to Malaysia but they need to be careful whatever they write in social media we have police eh, about PDRM policy and MCMC uh, who monitor them in whatever they write but suppose uh, people citizens our netizen they need to trust more from in malaysia we have a uh, source of news we call bernama berita national malaysia hmm. okay and then if something is not right if they are confused about the information they can check from sebenarnya sebenarnya.org or sebenarnya.my something like that so if if, if you know, we want to make sure regarding the the news they can check at this website right? sebenarnya.my or sebenarnya.org actually our bernama in malaysia berita national malaysia actually similar with antara in indonesia mm -hmm. so suppose the citizen or netizen they need to trust more on this source of news like bernama and antara compared to uh, citizen journalist okay we don't know the source of news uh, okay Okay, okay. Okay, any question from participants? Is there any other questions? Uh, we still have uh, 15 minutes. May I? Ibu Sita. Ibu. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abdul Rao, for interesting uh, presentations, but actually I have uh, two kind of activities at the same time. So I'm sorry if I repeat again uh, previous questions. Um, I'm not going to ask about the, uh, the, uh, the theme of your systematic literature review, but actually I am, I'm interested in uh, the way uh, we do the systematic review, systematic literature review, sorry. So um, 
maybe the uh, the lesson will be uh, useful for uh, our student uh, uh, just uh, how to do the systematic literature review and what kind of challenge you face and uh, everything about the technique of the uh, writing um, uh, of the systematic literature review. Maybe you can uh, explain to us. Okay, for systematic literature review, actually I have learned from someone from University of Putra Malaysia. He is very expert in systematic literature review. He managed to publish uh, his article for systematic literature review at Scopus Q1. Mm. Okay, a few Scopus in Q1 and Q2 journals. So I try try to learn from him, but I'm still under rockies, not very really expert like my mentor. And then I try to make it uh, simpler. Okay, actually, from what I learn from him is more complicated. Actually, mm. I, I need to to learn again from from him. But I try to make it simpler. And then I ask my students to to I, I teach my student to do the uh, systematic literature review as part of his or her assignment. Mm. Uh, so especially during this uh upper pandemic. So I I I, I don't, don't apa, I did like uh, before this I prefer if my students do uh, <coughs> in-depth interview <coughs> qualitative research they need to go to face to face okay and then for questionnaire sometimes they need to go uh, to distribute the questionnaire sometimes they go to online okay but for systematic interview they just do it at their home at their college so uh, uh this one especially i'm i'm more active during this pandemic before this mm. actually i i focus more on quantitative research my my area mm. is more on quantitative research which i need to do a lot of survey mm. okay and analysis using spss okay but, but for during this pandemic since last year okay i i'm more active using this systematic literature review and alhamdulillah has published at uh, a few journals but uh, didn't manage to get at Q1 or Q2 Scopus. Still, uh, my level, my journal atau, or my site journal, the the uh, lower index right, compared to Scopus. Uh, but I think, I believe if one day if I try to improve my skill in systematic literature review, I will try to submit to at least Scopus or Web of Science. Okay. And that one under the making, inshallah. Okay. So what kind of challenge at first when you start to write a uh, systematic literature review and what kind of strategy you you use to to tackle that kind of challenge okay so far i did with my colleagues i have a groups mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we give the key uh, the terms okay and then after we have uh, identified what are the articles an uh, example we have reduced example from from few thousands, and then we reduce to uh, 60, if I'm not mistaken. And then we try to share, okay, you, you try to cover two pages, I try to cover another two pages, and you try to cover mm. another few pages. Mm. And then, uh, we need to, actually it's simple, we don't need to read the whole article, as long as we can get the abstract, mm. we just read the abstract, look at the mm. methodology, look at the finding, that one is much easier. Mm. And then we compile all together, the tables. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, so, the challenging for system literature, like I, I have told you, is not very challenging because I have made it simpler mm. compared to what I have learned from my mentor, which is more complicated. So that one I need to learn more from my mentor in order for me to publish at uh, uh, Q1 or Q2. Q1. Okay. Okay. I'm not to that level yet. So, so work together with with colleagues is the the best. The best uh, way to to produce a systematic literature review, or we can do it by ourselves. Okay, uh, there is a quote: If you work alone, you can go fast. Mm. If you work in a group, you can go far. Mm. So I prefer to work in a group. So mm. what happened last year? I managed to publish al almost forty articles. Mm. 40 journal proceeding chapter in books and books because mm -hmm. I have a click who joined with my uh, publication with my research journey mm -hmm. so 
So that's why I managed to get uh, three times, uh, which this anugerah, we call it prolific writer. Because I have this colleague who helped me to produce article with me. Okay. Okay. So for my colleague, for my friends, you cannot say that you cannot write one article a year because I can write 40 articles a year. How mm. come you cannot publish one article a year? One and 40, consider the gap is yeah. very big. So if I can produce 40 articles, why you cannot publish one article in a year? Mm. That's the question I, I, I tell to my colleagues. <laughs> if those who are uh, uh, into research and then into this uh, writing uh, uh, more to publications. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Rao. Okay, you're welcome, Ibu Mundi. Okay, thank you, Ibu Mundi. That's uh, also interesting uh, topic with the methodolo uh, methodological aspect. Eh? Going uh, faster or going further, <laughs> we can produce uh, many articles or uh, we can only produce some articles with uh, this kind of uh, method because it is very helpful uh, for the students and also the lecture uh, right now during the pandemic era because we cannot uh, go to uh, the field. We can, uh, we are uh, rarely have to get a full interview with uh, someone or with our uh, informant, or maybe we are also uh, get really um difficult to make a survey mm -hmm. but maybe online survey is still uh, are you still doing online survey research dr yes. Rao? most of the time i use online survey because uh, i receive also a few grants so for based from that grants okay basically i will do quantitative research on, on online survey Oh, okay. They asked me example to publish uh, maybe around four scopus. So maybe uh, two or three, I will use based from my data from my uh, quantitative survey. The rest, uh, I use systematic literature review. Basically, if they ask me to produce at least two scopus for that grant, I will publish more than 10 scopus for that grant from the same grant. Okay, that's uh, really <laughs> a big achievement. Uh, because okay. I want to finish, uh, make use all the monies. Okay, okay, just now I, I received, uh, last month I received uh, 50 juta rupiah equals here 15,000 ringgit. So I will fully utilize that uh, 50, what, 50 million rupiah, is it? Okay, uh, I will fully utilize that money. Although they asked me to produce only two scopus, I try to publish more than 10 scopus. And that one, I collaborate with Bionis University. Uh, so they, are, they were very happy. Uh, it happened last two years, 2020. And then this year, 2022, they invited me once again to join with the, this matching grant, international matching grant. Okay, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Because uh, during uh, the pandemic, maybe... Uh, students and also uh, the lecturer uh, are difficult to manage how to uh, sorry how to manage uh, the research but uh, online survey and systematic literature review can be one of the solution mm -hmm. thank you for your sharing about uh, the two station of systematic literature uh, literature review uh, I hope and we hope uh, in the future, we can also collaborate in systematic literature review, uh, especially on your expertise in sociology, social media, and then uh, communication. Inshallah. <laughs> we also have uh, the same interest. Maybe it's, uh, we almost hit the time. <laughs> so, it's five minutes more to end the session. Thank you very much, Dr. Rao, for very uh, interesting and also enlightening um, information about systematic literature review on political communication in Malaysia. 
thank you uh, very much from uh, for the participants uh, from interesting questions also finally we come to the end uh, of the seminar i would like to thank dr rauf for impressive lecturing today i hope we still collaborate and continuing our relation uh, doing lecturing or doing research as uh, and also as a moderator i do apologize for making mistakes during the session uh, giving i uh, give a plot for the speaker and all of the participants thank you for your uh, participation wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, that's maybe the end uh, from me as a moderator but yusa could you please close in the session <laughs> Okay, before that, I would like to say uh, once again, thank you so much for inviting me. And then I want to say, uh, uh, apa, I'm uh, very sorry if there is any weakness uh, from me, from my side. Uh, thank you for joining my uh, my lecture. And I hope one day we can collaborate eh, between uh, my university, my faculty, and your university with your faculty. Especially, I'm very close with uh, Dr. Yusa. Okay, thank you so much once again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Kevin. please, please set the stage. Bu Musa Sertul, Sofa Bu Sita. Uh, thank you once again to Dr. Abdul Rauf uh, for your valuable uh, contributions today. And I hope, uh, as we have discussed before, that we can collaborate more, not only uh, for this general lecture, but also maybe for research and also student exchange, maybe for the next year. Uh, I hope after this pandemic, uh, when the situation are getting better, we can go to Malaysia or maybe even you can also uh, come to Bandung. Uh, we share and discuss anything uh, with also uh, Ibu uh, Caroline Pascarina and uh, with uh, uh, all the college in political science in Pajajaran University. Uh, thank you very much and I hope uh, we can see not only in Zoom, but uh, we can uh, uh, see face by face uh, in the Very real person. world. <laughs> Allah, hopefully one day. Inshallah. Okay, thank you. I, mean, I plan to go to Bandung, hopefully one day. I really want to go to Bandung. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. We will tell you, Dr. Rauf. Okay, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Zin Pami.